Um, okay, so the whole news about the alpha fold and how to uh, use it and all the things are mostly toward the people who have like a lot of bioinformatic knowledge. Uh, but the thing is that, um, I mean, a lot of the good uh, uh, parts of this thing is like also important for the wet lab scientists, the scientists that mostly do not have like a very deep bioinformatic knowledge, but are very excited to check, I don't know, maybe their uh, next protein that uh, they want to add a linker to it, or I don't know, make a fusion protein, or they are using in a specific organism that is not like a very famous one, and they want to check an open ending frame to see the structure to somehow use it. But the thing is that this thing is still not uh, that accessible to everybody. So, and I was searching, I was searching in the Google and also in the YouTube to see if find a video that actually explains the, um, how this thing works and uh, like in simple words, how to uh, start using it. And I couldn't find something. So I was like thinking that let's make a video and uh, show people how to use it, at least with the current thing that is uh, accessible. So first of all, I want to show you this blog post from the DeepMind website, which like made the alpha fold. And I mean, you can go here and start reading this thing and know the basics of the how alpha fold was uh, made and how it's used. And there are there's some video and the other things and how they win the CASP 14 and the other things. But overall, what I want to mention is like how to use it. So let's go. If you are working with one of the 20 organisms that are mostly used, I don't know, like the, um, like the, from human, from like rats and from mouse and from like the other ones, um, it's going to be easier for you because Google uh, like made a partnership with the EBI, the EMBL lab, and uh, they, made, they made this database. This is the alpha fold protein structure database. It's actually equivalent to Uniprot somehow, and it has also access to Uniprot which probably you know about the Uniprot and how it's important for knowing it's like the NCBI of the proteins and it's connected to the protein data bank. They made their own protein data bank uh, and made a structure like Uniprot that you can come here and search the structure of proteins based on the prediction that alpha fold made, not just the crystallography or like the actual structure of the protein. So it can have mistakes. I mean, the crystallography also can have mistakes. But it's like so simple, you just come here, for example, I know it gives you example, but you can search your protein name here. It says search protein gene, unique product, oxygen, or organism. For example, it says free fatty acid receptor 2. I come here and for human, see it's here. And it gives you information. You can download the PDB file to open it in your computer. You can get the predicted align error. You can have the 3D structure, zoom in and check it out. Check out this whole structure like this with the sequence and it gives you where it's more confident about the structure, where not, which probably it's not like a confidence of probably in every part, confidence of how it's confident about the prediction. It's mostly how confident that there is some kind of folding in that prediction. For example, if you don't see a folding here, it doesn't mean that there is a folding and you cannot predict it. It's mostly because there is no folding here. So it's like the terminal that can be probably, you can add a link here to it here if you want to add something, maybe. And then there is this information about like the error and other things and which you can get for, for a specific protein that is accessible. But the problem is that sometimes, for example, in my case, I'm trying to add a linker to a protein or I don't know, fuse two proteins or I don't know, work with a protein that is not accessible from one of these 20 organisms. So how am I going to work? I mean, I'm not going to be able to access it from this, uh, I don't know, alpha protein structure database. So. So now the thing comes. There is like uh, this whole thing came, and after that Google also published the um, the like the open source version in the GitHub, which you can see here everything for the the whole um, algorithm and the database and everything and the, all the steps to install it. But the thing is that first of all, I'm talking about people who don't have the uh, full knowledge to installing all these things and working with it, and secondly. Um, I mean, even if you have the knowledge, it's going to take a lot of resources for you to do it. For, for example, if you want to just have a database, it's going to be 2.2 terabyte. And obviously, you should use the SSD if you want to access the database fast enough, not a normal, like um, a normal mechanical hard drive, um, if you want the performance. So the thing is that um, even if you have the list of the requirement, which are like 85 gigabyte of RAM, I mean, not necessarily 85 gigabyte, it's gonna work with less, but 85 gigabyte is for anything that you wanna use. 
like you have the 12 CPUs, you 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 probably don't have that super crazy GPU and the three terabyte of disk space for everything. So how you're gonna actually use it? So that was my problem. I actually have all these things right now, except the, the disk space. So I was thinking, how am I gonna use it? So um, and I was in Twitter and someone posted that okay, Google published a collab version of the whole thing. So collab. What is collab? Um, uh, so let me just start from the beginning so I can explain to you what is Colab. Uh, so Colab is like a, some kind of co uh, cloud computing server which is easier to use for people who want to learn machine learning or artificial intelligence and use it for their like their own purposes. But that's not my point here. I don't want to teach you how to use Colab. I just want to show you that there is this Colab notebook. You just open it up and then push the connect or reconnect in my case here. After pushing it, Google will give you some free space in their servers, which is like connected with some disk space, some RAM, a GPU and other things. And I mean, if the GPU was not set it up for you, it's a, it didn't say it's a GV, GPU backed here. You come to runtime and come to the uh, change runtime type and say that I want a GPU and save it and then reconnect. And um, I don't want to continue explaining everything about Colab. I just want to come down here that the only thing the only thing that you should do is that you come here and put your protein sequence here. After putting your protein sequence here, you come to runtime and you come to run all. And it starts downloading everything uh, and then installing it and then uh, running the algorithm to search through the multiple sequence alignment. And after that, it gets everything and downloads it to your computer. The thing is that it doesn't download all these things into your computer. The only thing that is downloaded to your computer in the is the last result, which is like what I showed you in the uh, database. It's gonna be like that. And the rest of the thing, all the other things are gonna stay in the Google's database. But what's the problem with this thing? The problem is that even though it's usable, um, it's not gonna be uh, for every protein. As the protein sequence gets bigger, the protein gets bigger, the sequence gets longer. Um, the amount of RAM that is necessary gets more. So if you get a little longer, it's gonna collapse because the, the RAM is not enough or maybe because it's a free instance, the GPU is not enough um, accessible for you or a lot of people are using it. So you come to Colab Pro, which like it's a subscription, you pay Google and Google gives you faster GPUs, more memory and other things. And then you come here and then rerun it and probably for a lot of proteins, this thing is gonna be enough. And it's not, even though it's not the full version of the algorithm, it's like, trust me, it's very accurate. I mean, compared to what I wanted, I was comparing it to one of the sequences that was with the crystallography from uh, in, in the Uniprot I found, and then I used it for another protein that I added a link here to it, and it was amazing. I mean, you're gonna be surprised and it's gonna be amazing. It's a great experience. But, um, you know, that's gonna help you. But the thing is that if even in that case, for example, I had a fusion protein combination of three proteins and it was too long and the RAM was not enough, the last step is to try to install it on your own computer, which in that case, you are in like in three categories. If you are a Linux person, probably you don't need my explanation, you already done, done it. Or there are two other ones. You are a Mac person or a Windows one. If you are in Mac, I don't work with Mac, but I think because the whole thing is based on Unix system, which is close to Linux, you're gonna be able to install everything. But if you are in a Windows, you should use the WSL2, Windows subsystem for Linux, which I don't wanna explain how to install it. There are several videos on YouTube that you can just check and like in 10 minutes or less, just install everything. But if you've installed it, what you do is that you come here into this link, which is like the page for the uh, Colab, and then you, uh, for the, um, sorry, for the alpha fold, you copy this thing, and you just control and paste everything and then download it. And it goes and gets the whole GitHub rep repository containing the information for this thing. And that's the basics. But after this thing is done, which like it's gonna be done very soon, hopefully. Okay, after this thing is finished, what you are doing is that you go to the folder, CD to, uh, to that folder, and then you make another folder, make directory, mkdir and you call it for example database db okay and then what you do uh, you try to run 
any the codes that Google has put inside the script folder because there is this like another folder I just want to do it like this you just put this thing and go to the script folder and then for example you go through each one of the algorithms one at, uh, sorry databases one at a time it just explains it here you see these are all the databases you should download this is the biggest one the 1.7 terabyte database these are the smaller ones if you have everything except the like the hard like a lot of this space like me you don't need to download this one you can just download this one and use the reduce database version of the algorithm if you do have everything i mean go through it and download everything you can just go here and say download all and there is a data that's SH. and then push it and it starts downloading the whole database and putting it in the database folder and after that it's like super easy you just come down here it says that okay uh, there is a file that you should put the directory of this database folder inside it which it's like pretty straightforward and then then copy paste and run this thing I mean you should have a docker image it's a little more complicated uh, then you can search Google how to install docker it's also easy and then come here I can can ask me in comments and I can make a video on installing docker and then use this thing copy paste this thing and then at, at the end you just copy paste this thing and you give it the pass to your the fast a file containing your protein sequence okay you don't need to temp, use a max template date here uh, i mean if you are trying to use one of the pdb files that's already there as it says you should use this thing so it doesn't it doesn't cheat by using the actual structure itself uh, but if you are using uh, like me uh, you don't have the old dc space for this one you should also use this command for reduced version of the database so yeah that that's all i guess that's a basic for using uh, alpha fold and then getting the structure hopefully you're gonna be also very amazed and surprised by the result that it gives you and thank you for listening and watching this video